on today's video, we finish our coverage of Lost Kingdom 52 as 411 against 430 went out the window. 430 did everything they could to hold, but 411 were way too much to handle. In this video, we're going to talk about a few things that caused this KVK to end the way it is. And once more, analyze more reports. We have a ton of them in this video and a little bit of reference to future videos that you all have been asking for as part of your feedback in the comments. So sit back. Drop a like on the video. Hey there, YouTube. Welcome back to Gecko Gaming. As we wrap up this coverage of Lost Kingdom 52, I still had a bunch of reports that I wanted you guys to see. Some footage of action that's worth showing and a little bit of extra information that'll make your lives a little bit better when it comes to fighting and understanding KBK a little bit more. Before we start though, I am a sponsored content creator by Rise of Kingdoms. If you enjoy the content, drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel down below, hit the bell to get a notification. We got a bunch of awesome videos coming up this week, including one that y'all have been waiting for for quite a while. It might start with an M and I'm not saying anything more about that. And as we enjoy some of these reports, here is one where until Takeda actually did not hold too well uh, against a very good Charles Martel Constantine. Here is one thing. Of course, uh, that's 9 million troops against uh, the one. This is Tintin who got zeroed. We have a full video about him carded up on the top right if you haven't seen that. 9 million troops against uh, the full rally. It makes sense that the rally did not work out too well, but still crazy amount of damage nonetheless. And this was the first of the deaths that he had. So at this stage, 430 reached a point where they're pretty much running low on troops and running low on, on the fuel, on the energy of, of putting up against 411. One of the things that are very clear from reports, and you haven't seen that because, again, uh, the, my report looking skills were not amazing this time around, and I do apologize for that. Y'all give me feedback about it. We'll do better next time. Uh, it, it was clear that 411K were, 411, not only K, were using substantial amount more tier fives than 430 did. For 411, the, the quantity of tier fives available is really stupendous, and uh, these guys were ready to rock and roll. When you look at their reports, when you look at their rallies, when you look at their buildings, and this is something also 430 told me, was that essentially the, the definition of tier fives versus tier fours and the evenness of them was out the window. It did not work out very well, and 430 did not have as many tier fives available for the fight, which makes sense. At this stage, we're kind of looking around through the map, trying to figure out who's fighting what, what's going on. Uh, 430 have been defeated at this stage. They're still doing what they can, but you can see that they started kind of backpedaling on, on their defense. They're sending sieges out there, and so it was very clear that this was all but over, right? It's okay. It was, excuse me. It was over. It's not all but over. It's, it, and the rallies kept coming, right? Like even when Pink had a flag burning, when Purple dropped a flag, Pink did not hesitate to try to send a rally out there to cause some pain. And there are a couple of things about KVK that are worth mentioning and are important to mention. And Quite frankly, uh, it's it's a thing about KVK in general in Rise of Kingdoms that is a very big problem. On stream yesterday, we talked about like possibilities. Someone raised an option of how to make KVK more interesting, and the suggestion was to have like mini uh, mini kings lands for each zone, essentially to contest for the holy sites every time. And my answer to that was, as much as that's nice, all that'll happen is. The first time a holy site is going to be contested, it's going to be all out, and then the rest of them, whoever won the first one, is pretty much going to win the rest because there's going to be nothing left to fight for. And this is something in in this KVK that was interesting to see if it happened or not. 430 kind of tried to not let that happen, but at the end of the day, everybody leaves everything they have on Kingsland. Now, we have heard of, we haven't covered that KVK because Legend Ronnie was in that and he covered it quite extensively for the record. Crazy lag all of a sudden. Uh, this, these are ups and downs of, the, of, of this game. Like you can literally have something like you're seeing right here, a device that runs on, on the highest of resolutions, the best possible thing all of a sudden gets this kind of lag. 
uh, you should be aware of this. This is why I left this clip, by the way. You should be aware of the possibilities of there being a, a decent amount of lag here and there. But regardless, there have been KVKs where a kingdom has pushed into King's Land, pushed a kingdom out of it, and the kingdom that came out of it managed to come back in and then win the KVK. One of the problems in Rise of Kingdoms is that momentum is very, very important. When momentum is in your, in your favor, it can shift the waves of how a KVK is fought drastically. And so more often than not, people are very against allowing the momentum to go away and then re-aggressing. Uh, we have more reports right here, folks. Uh, counter rallies, people getting zeroed, uh, defenses all across the board. Ark here sent us a good amount of reports as he got rallied himself by a double rally and did crazy amount of damage. The man insta-healed and took a couple more. It was just unbelievable. Ark is a crazy player. But anyway, think about KVK as not only the first battle. You need to realize that at a 41 day event where on the 40th day, on the 20 something day, you you get into the this event. I mean, look at these reports. Marcus hitting with a 10 million loss on the 18 million loss on the flag, Wuzetian, Constantine. These are the kinds of things that I'm talking about. People go all out and don't leave anything in the tank for later on. 430 tried to leave something in the tank when it come, came to the level eight pass. They put a bunch of forts out there and all that good stuff. But it just wasn't enough. And I'll tell you this, I have a feeling that we will start seeing KVKs when people are gonna make the decision to back off, allow themselves to get locked into a pass, and then find a way to get back in the action in some shape or form. Uh, those passes, level eight passes, or yeah, level eight passes, remain yours and uncontested for a few days, even after King's Land opened, which allows you after the first day to lose access to King's Land, well, to lose land in King's Land, but still have the ability to get in there, especially if you give your skillful craftsmen a little bit of time so that you can put two or three flags next to each other very, very quickly. It is very viable to figure a way to essentially get yourself back into King's Land. It is a very viable thing to do. And so this KVK, I think that the mistake 430 did is that they essentially left it all on the field on the one fight. And quite frankly, I would have said, I can honestly tell you that if 411 were allowed to get to, to that level eight pass in a much quicker pace, and then when they went to focus on the other side, 430 would have hit, that would have worked out maybe a little bit better for them. And so in this KVK, uh, there was a lot of momentum in favor of 411 and a lot more tier fives for 411, which truly 430 and anyone else in that KVK couldn't have stood against. Overall, I think that our coverage of this KVK was not really a coverage of a KVK. I, I'm really not even going to pretend to tell you that I was not uh, that, that I was not all about keeping up with 411. There are a lot of people in 411 that I really like, and it's a very good kingdom that does a lot of very good things, and they're willing to share a lot of it with the community. It's why Ark gave us a little bit of hints and advice in the previous video. I mentioned them about why they used. Richard about what kind of tests they did about situational use of commanders and so forth and so on and we didn't really cover the wide part of like how the flagging worked out and what was the strategy and all that good stuff and that's something that you guys talk to me about it like listen we want to see that as well and so the thing about covering a strat the strategy of kvk and covering how kvk works out is that Essentially, it's impossible to do it when only one side or even one alliance cooperates with you. You guys saw it very clearly in Lost Kingdom 75, where 602 were the only guys that I had any communication with, and I got a few wrong things, and I didn't know the strategy of a few of the kingdoms because I never had any interaction with any of, of them. And so I think that what we'll do is in future videos what or in future coverages, I will post on the channels like... Uh, community tab, which you can see on your YouTube, like on your YouTube uh, homepage. When I start covering a KVK, I'll be like, I'm gonna start covering this KVK. If you're from any of these kingdoms in this KVK and you wanna hit me up, let's do this. These are my cords, hit me up. Let's, let's get the information done. So first of all, thank you for those of you who commented that and asked about that and, and mentioned that. 
The second thing is about covering a little bit more um, the strategies employed around these KBKs. And the, the truth of the matter is covering strategy is, it requires a lot more time and, and conversations than, than I've had the option to do in here. 411 would have definitely told me everything they wanna do, but I didn't really know who their opposition was and I was quite frankly super, super busy to start like keeping up with everything and all the stories and all that. And so this was kind of just to show you the action all these reports are super meaningful. This is another uh, one of those Richard Constantine reports. And these are very, very meaningful reports. There's a reason I keep showing it to you guys. Irene, shout out to you, Irene, in the comments mentioned that there were two types of Atel Takedas that, that, no, that were noticeable. Uh, one that's more attack stacked and one that's more health stacked. And the results were very different. These videos with all these reports are also there to show you the different types of stats in Atel Takedas and in defenses of Atel, Atel Takedas and what caused a better defense and a worse defense than others. So you can take that, of course, take with a grain of salt because once more, tier fours, tier fives, all that stuff is completely, completely different. And it's not like 100% even rallies and even defenses and all that good stuff. But nonetheless, there, is, there was plenty of data to be gathered out of these reports and uh, to kind of show you what's, what's the capability of these commanders and of these kingdoms. Coming up in the future, there is a couple of videos that I do want to cover that are, in, that are part of things that you guys have been asking me. And I am asking of you right now in the comments down below, those of you who are still in this video, to let me know if there's something that I've missed that has to do with that's part of what I'm, I'm, I'm about to, to tell you that if I missed any subject that you guys want to talk about. So the first and foremost thing is flagging strategies in Kingsland. Uh, there, we're going to do an exclusive video coming up in a couple of days on how to flag in Kingsland, which areas are important to know about, which areas are not important to know about. There are some pitfalls in Kingsland that you should be aware of. There are some flagging strategies that are very, very potent and useful for early Kingsland advantage. And so that's one video that you guys have talked about, like flagging strategies that you want me to cover, and we will do that. The next one is about pacing yourself during KVK. Essentially, where do you call it quits to, to take a step back to potentially allow some things at the front to burn while you're regrouping in the back or something like that? We have a, a pacing video coming up soon as well, sometime this week about pacing your fighting and how you can essentially allow one team to feel like they have the upper hand while you're preparing to, to do something within a few hours in a completely different area of the map that they will not see that coming. Uh, essentially allowing some shifts in momentum and that kind of stuff. We're gonna cover that in this week's videos as well. And finally, some of you asked what should you counter a Takeda with? Uh, is counter rallying a Takeda viable? And if it is or it isn't, what you should do and how you should do it. That video is the one that I'm still kind of thinking whether or not it's worth uh, discussing just because I don't think that a Takeda's life shelf is going, uh, shelf life is going to be as significant as, as it was when they first came out. I think that now that folks are aware of how strong they are and how much of a dominant pair they are, they will be preparing ahead of time for it. We will see much more Constantines available, much more uh, Charles Martels being expertised early on to guarantee that Atel Takeda do not pose as big of a damage as they usually do, as they did to us at least. So that's another subject. But in the comments down below, you should let me know what do you think is another rally on, on our friend Ark? What do you want to see that has to do with KVK strategy coverage and all that good stuff? And again, if you have any feedback, any comments, any questions, anything of that sort, uh, and I'm, I'm here for that. I, you guys think I don't read the comments, but I read every single comment. I do everything I can to give you what you're asking for, essentially, if it's something that's within my means. And for those of you who are still wondering what's going on with our KVK, we did a full stream where we went crazy gathering in KVK because my KVK hasn't even reached, not even zone seven yet, literal alone. Like we haven't even reached passes level seven so or six for that matter. We barely made it out to the next zone, which are 
of pass number four. We're waiting for passes fives for the ru ancient ruins. We might do some streams of us fighting in ancient ruins. We'll see how that one works out. With all that lag and all that, it's probably not gonna happen, but we're gonna do our best to do that. And from there, we'll figure it out. But anyway, I've been rambling for a bit much as we really just stroll through these very interesting reports. Uh, there, massive shout out to 430, to all the folks who were involved in this KVK. A lot of, of interesting conversations came out of this. A lot of feedback came out of this. And it was a very fun time covering. I'm really looking forward to see what 411 wants more, another one of these, one more of these uh, reports. And uh, Richard Constantine report. And, and honestly, I'm really looking forward to see what 411 keep doing. We're gonna keep track of them and maybe even send like a small account out there just so we can keep up with what's going on there. Looking forward to seeing them in Osiris League. And as y'all heard from, from me through Arc, from Arc through me though, is that they are still in this report again. I don't know how we ended up with it again, again on the screen, but they are testing and they're testing very, very strongly. And they're doing a lot of tests of many different types of commanders and many different pairs for many different situational things. Again, we have a YSS Theodora trying to hold against the behemoth that is Atel Takeda. And uh, this is a completely different rally from what we saw previously. In the previous video, they all saw this. There was a double rally hitting this and it was a world of pain. This is the continuation of that essentially. In a moment, another rally is gonna come out to the flag right next to it and madness is gonna ensue. Yeah, this video was kind of just like a wrap up with the rest of the footage that I had, with the rest of the reports that I had, with a little bit of extra to give y'all. Um, I, I honestly don't, uh, there was a, a little bit more fighting that happened once the level eight passes opened up. 430 triple rally the pass a couple of times, I believe, and they also tried to hold their forts a couple of times. But at that stage, I was just way too busy with work and it happened at the worst possible times for me to be able to record it. So I didn't, but indeed red, it just took over the left side. They're on their way to the right side or the other way around. And now it's kind of just like cleaning up the KVK, earning the rewards and finishing it off nicely. And yeah, that's, that, that's pretty much that. I'm gonna leave y'all with a little bit of this beautiful rallying going on. In a moment, another rally is gonna come this way and then a little bit of extra nice little damage being done by the kingdom in, by the kingdoms in four, in, in Lost Kingdom 52, 411, 430, and a bunch of other peeps. I don't honestly even know who else is in this kingdom, in this Lost Kingdom. So apologies to the rest of the kingdoms. Shout out to you all, shout out to Run, the guys in purple, to the rest of the crew in here. I, I This was was honestly not keeping up with the KVK, but just keeping up with some friends and with some of the one of the biggest kingdoms in the game. We have two more KVKs we'll be, we're gonna be covering very, very soon. We're gonna cover my own KVK, Lost Kingdom 8. And of course, we have an account ready to roll in Lost Kingdom 1. That's gonna be some awesome stuff coming up in a couple of weeks, so don't miss out on that. William Chandragupta and a couple of other commander videos coming up in the near future as well. Until the next time, take care. Have a great rest of your day. Enjoy the rest of this footage. We're gonna move the camera a little bit so you can see the, the rally down below, the rally up on the top and wrap it up. Take care, have a good one. Peace.